I welcome to my episode eight. This is awesome. I'm thank you. I'm glad you're here with me, and I'm having so much fun doing this show. This is about getting started in real estate by flipping the easiest type of property land. Today, I'm going to talk about how to complete your first deal in 45 days. We originally covered this topic for those of you diehards who keep track. Um, in podcast number 313, I looked this up and it aired back in October 2016. Later, I wrote about uh, or I wrote out this plan basically in a series of articles for our newsletter. And it was so popular, people still remember it, that my team gets requests for copies of my article. So I thought I would share it here today and then I'm going to revamp it for a blog on our site um, probably in one day next week. I am Jill DeWitt, co-founder of Land Academy, and together with my partner, Stephen B Jack Butala, we have completed over 16,000 transactions of many, pop of many property types, not just land. We all know there's money to be made in real estate, and most people are doing it wrong. So that is why I created this weekly live show. I am here every Wednesday at two o'clock Pacific time to help you connect the dots to start flipping land so you can move on to bigger transactions and other types of real estate. So today is all about getting your first deal done in 45 days. So after I cover the steps, I'm going to open this up to answer your questions. So feel free to start popping them into the comment area at any time. One advantage of being a land or property investor is the luxury of making your own schedule. And that means one can work around a full-time career while you're getting started and still enjoy family time. That's how most of us start. And that's why I am sharing this realistic timeline to show you how it's done. So here's, here's what you would do. Imagine, you know, you work your full-time job. You only have four hours to devote on a, let's just say a Sunday afternoon. So what do you do week one? You sit down, you spend that time picking a county. So week one, pick a county to send offers. Part of what we share in Land Academy 1.0 is Steven's strategy on how to select a county. There are three main factors that go into zeroing in on an area that would be a perfect place to send offers that get a good response. The three factors are, one, using populi, excuse me, population density maps and census maps to look for inexpensive land. And I'm going to give you a little tip. We've got tired of trying to track this information down. So I'm going to show you where I get this information, where we get it from, and all of our members right now. We get it here, county-wise. This is our free website that Stephen created. So remember I talked about population density maps and census maps. Let's just say you're going to, you're going to mail Oklahoma. You go to countywise, click on Oklahoma. Look what I've got here, by the way, all this county information. Stephen put weeks <laughs> into getting this all um, compiled and created on the site to help you. So let's just show you. I'm going to pick a county in here. Let's just say I'm going to pick, I'm going to go right in the Oklahoma County, Oklahoma. Why not start there? takes me to the county. There's just so much information, but what I really wanted to show you was actually right here. We have back tax lists and census data that I talked about. Look at this. Here's my census data I can zero on. Here's my population density maps. So I'm not gonna go into great detail now about how to use those that's in the program, but I just wanna tell you that's, that's something that goes into picking a county. So when you're spending your four hours on a Sunday, this is some of the research that you're doing. Another thing that you're going to do is you're going to sit down and compare the total number of properties against those that have associated back taxes. 
again, that's actually found free also on that same site, not county wise. It was there when I showed the list of all the counties and the information. One of those were numbers that show the back tax properties. I'm not picking back, back tax properties to send offers to, but I'm using that as a gauge when picking a county. And the third thing is reviewing online sales venues for inexpensive land markets. By the way, I want to point out there are 3,142 counties and county equivalents in the United States. Tons of area to buy and sell countless properties without tripping on anyone who's using a secret county list. You will know what to look for. You know what? You're going to create your own list. And once you know what to look for, this can all be done, you know, in three to four hours on a Sunday afternoon. So that's it. Week one, that's all you did. So now fast forward a week later, week two of my 45 day process here. What am I doing? Week two is about downloading and scrubbing data to send it to the printer for mailing. So this week is about getting this data into uh, a sheet and turning it into a mailer and having it priced and getting into offers in owner's hands. And again, you could do this in three to four hours on a weekend because of the access now that you have to the pro tools like direct assessor data that, that we can provide. So we're licensed providers of the top three biggies. And that's something that we share with you to make this easy. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to spend days or weeks dealing with a county and then with a VA to get your data ready. You want to sit down, you want to plug in the criteria, and you want to download the data for the exact properties that you want to mail, like size, you want to hit on zoning and land use, um, any criteria that you're, you're, you're uh, trying to isolate there. Because you're going to put that into a sheet, get into a mailer, you're going to price it, and you're going to price it in bulk, and then you're going to send it to offers to owners, by the way, because they're going to do the mail merge for you. They're going to do the printing for you and they're going to mail it. You don't have to be a pro at Excel to do this. We help you with that. And another nice thing is our data uh, that we use, our, our primary data for land is CoreLogix RealQuest Pro. It comes in the same format every time, regardless of the county. That's crucial. If anybody who's done multiple counties and been through this process, you know, it's, it's important to have it delivered the same way. And you don't have to relearn the process every time for a new county. Uh, also, you can do easily do a multi-county mailer at the same time. Super easy. By the way, I have inside information. <laughs> O2O offers to owners, our printing company, is price matching for our standard two-page mailer. So check out the website uh, if that's something you're doing and uh, contact Omar at Offers to Owners. So that's week two. That's all you did. You download the data, you got it ready, you sent it to Offers to Owner, they did the mail merge for you and it went out in the mail. So now you're on week three. That was again, just a couple hours on a Sunday afternoon because you're working a full-time job. You're just ramping up here. So now you're on week three. So what happens? The week three is about reviewing returned offers and returning calls. So your letters went out in the mail and now the recipients are beginning to take action. So some property owners may be quickly signing and returning your offers via the mail and some are calling or they're emailing you back. What are the typical responses? Well, some, let's be honest, <laughs> some owners are, we'll just say, less than thrilled by the offer or they simply do not want to sell. Yes, they may leave nutty voice messages and that's okay. It's nothing to get hung up on. The, uh, some owners are just not sure yet. And so you know what they're going to do? They're going to save your letter, your offer for a rainy day. We have personal experience uh, sellers tracking us down years later when they're ready to sell. Often it's the kids who now inherited the property and they are thrilled to find our letter and know that we're still here. And then the third response is, boy, they're just ready to do the deal. You hit them at the right time and they're like, heck yeah, you know, how fast can we do this? So your goal for week three 
as these are coming in is you're going to spend three to four hours of due diligence and pick the best property or properties, uh, depending on your budget to purchase. You know, how do they line up against Stephen for Stephen's four A's? So remember those are access, acreage, affordability, and attribute, you know, and as everyone, as you're doing your due diligence, one of the things too is, you know, where do they stand on their taxes? you got to factor that in. And is everyone alive and able to sign? So that's week three. And all of this is getting, you get this all ready to go because next week is all about pulling the trigger and buying the properties. So that covers weeks one through three of my 45 day process and all done, you know, in just a few hours on a weekend. So I want to recap those again. Week one is just sitting down, spending time, just really getting into it, you know, and picking a county to send offers. That's it. Week two is now you got that all figured out. Now you're going to go in and download the data, scrub the data, send it to the printer, get them in the mail. Again, all done in that quick afternoon. And then the third week, now you're sitting down reviewing your returned offers and your return phone calls. So it's kind of a lot. So I decided to break this up into two shows. So today is weeks one through three, and I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to hold you off for next week when we cover weeks four through six. So now I want to go ahead and I want to open it up to your um, questions. So please uh, ask away here. How do <laughs> Hang on a moment here. I'm trying to make it view. Let me show the show Jake here. I have a howdy. Let's see if it shows up there. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Jake. Nice to see you. I love you know what, Jake. I love that you're so um, active and vocal on on not only this show but all of our member calls. And you ask really good questions. And I'm by the way. Feel free to share on here too, Jake. If you want to throw in here any comments about how well you're doing or transactions that you're completing or something, just to, you know, keep everyone posted, this would be a great area. So feel free to share that information. All right, let's see. I have people watching. I'm waiting for some good questions. I'm trying to think. Um, what's what? What should I share here today? 2.0 is out there, so. Just to give everybody, you know, I'll give you some heads up right now, something that's on my mind. Um, we're going to have a, a blowout uh, end of year celebration now that 1.0 and 2.0 are out there and and uh, available and and done. And then I'm going to I'm probably going to close up membership at the end of December after one big last congr you know, big thing. Because usually the typically the beginning of the year is we kind of relook at our programs, relook at the pricing, and get ready to roll out some new stuff. And I'm going to be rolling out. Stephen and I are going to be rolling out Land Academy Light in January. So uh, we are reviewing closing up enrollment at the on uh, January one, and until we revamp everything and come out with Land Academy Light uh, later on in January. So. Just a heads up, keep your eyes out. Um, don't let that stop you now because if you contact my team, if you're really serious about this, you contact my team, we're going to make it happen, by the way. So um, they have some good good specials and things that they can always you know, help you out with too anyway. So thank you. This is kind of a weird, weird quiet day. I'm looking for some questions here. I'm trying to think what else I can share with you. Um, let's see. I'm going to show a couple things, which is really kind of interesting in county wise real quick here. So let me show that. There we go. So county wise, the, the time and the energy that went into this is amazing, by the way. I can't believe how much, how much effort and data is collected. I was talking to you about, I'm going to go back to the top here. You know, when you're picking a county, what you're looking for. So one of the things is, see this back tax list? Again, I'm not looking for back tax list, but I'm looking at counties. I'm going to make it 
bigger here. I'm going to help everybody out. By the way, what we do here, we're trying to take the guesswork out of this. Trying to make this so you know going into it. You're not just throwing a dart at a dartboard and picking and counting. Let's see how it goes. No way. We spent too much time and too much energy, you know, into this ourselves. This has been our business, you know, Stephen primarily since the 90s. Um, and then I came along later on. I mean, this we've been doing this full time for years. And we don't, we don't want to guess. And that's why we, we, there is no secret county list. There's things that you look for and you know what to do. So you're not guessing, you know, you're going to get a good response. So one of the things I want to show you here is, is uh, the number of parcels. There's a direct relationship to the number of parcels that are in a county and are in a back tax situation when you're sending out offers. You don't want too high. You don't want too low. There's a mix, but what I want to show you here is in this, you know, this Oklahoma County, um, this list of counties, I should say, and it shows you the number of parcels. Um, so when you get into our program and like Jake, this is perfect for you, but I know you're, you're way past that video, but this is where you would have looked, you know, when you were looking for, you're like, okay, now I'm picking a county. Where do I look at the relationship from my maps? and my due diligence as I'm thinking about it. I wanna see how many back tax properties are in this county. Here's where I look. And then we all have access. I wanna now I wanna compare that to the number of parcels in the county as a whole. Well, we do that in RealQuest Pro, um, data or CoreLogic's product that we have. We're licensed providers of that and we share that with everybody. So that kind of gives you an in insight to that. All right, so I'm looking for, oh, here we go. I got some questions popping in. Let's see here, sorry about that. Uh, Dennis asks, do you avoid mailing to Northern state counties in their colder months of the year? No, but I will tell you this. Um, that's a great question, Dennis. No, it, it might be a good reason to hit them up <laughs> this time of year. I'm not, I'm, you know, buying them when that they may, they may have a mental block thinking that, oh, pause, please. Sorry about that little technical difficulty in our end. So thank you for being patient. <laughs> okay, Dennis, great question. Um, what I was saying, do you avoid, Dennis asked, do you avoid mailing to Northern state counties during the colder months of the year? No, I don't. But what's interesting is they might be on the mindset that it's harder to sell and might be more excited to get your offer. So I don't. Uh, and then I'm paying cash for it anyway. So I'm not worried if it takes a few months to sell. What I would recommend though is try to get photos uh, right before it snows or, you know, wait it, wait until the snow goes away, get some blue sky photos. You don't really want a lot of photos with snow on the ground because that traditionally uh, can, can turn people off a little bit. Uh, they may not want to buy their, you know, uh, a piece of property in a wintry tundra, you know, and they, it's probably their vacation thing. So that's the only tip I would give on that, but excellent question. Thank you, Molly. Molly asks, do you change your mailing schedule around the holidays? I do not change my mailing schedule slash however, I'm aware of it. <laughs> Sometimes like even, even today, I have to say I was, I, uh, I didn't know coming in today that there was no mail due to, you know, former president, uh, Bush's funeral services today. So just, just be aware of that. There's sometimes little hiccups like that, that affect your mail getting out, but it doesn't change a thing. You just kind of make in and uh, be ready. There you go. Ben asks, hi, Ben. I sent my first 1500 record mailer two weeks ago. How long should I expect until the bulk of responses come in? One thing I would, I would definitely recommend, and we do this as well, put 
uh, put a secret mailer to you in every one of your units. Send one to yourself. So that way, when you get it, you know it's hitting. That's how you know. So, and then you could start, you know, planning, be ready. So usually two to two to three weeks, it's going to start hitting. And you want to be consistent because once you start that mail going, if you say you're sending out mail regularly every week or every two weeks, whatever it is, you know, the only, the only lag time is just that first wave, because once that first wave hits, now it's just going to be ongoing. And like I said, throw one into you and then you'll know, and oh, here comes that mailer because you, you tagged it a different way. And then, you know, that's who's getting hit. You know, that county is getting their, their mail right now. Awesome question. Per asks, do you ever buy land way outside a major MSA more than two hours in a way? And if so, what is your criteria? Yep, absolutely do. You know, it's the same. I do the same. Um, am I trying to say the same four uh, attributes? Our same four A's, basically. You know, does it have access? Is it large acreage? It may not be right near an MSA, but there may be some other fantastic attribute. Maybe it's near um, the most po popular, you know, Colorado hunting country or some fabulous Florida lake or something like that. There's an attribute that might steer people or get people uh, interested in that area. So I'm, I'm not afraid of that two hour drive. Starting out, I would make it easy on myself and stick stick with that criteria. But moving on. I, I wouldn't be afraid of it. And what happens too is what usually as you start the process and people are calling you back and they say, Hey, yeah, uh, you called me on this property. I am happy to sell it. One of your questions always should be, by the way, what else do you have? He, they might throw something and like, well, you know, I didn't think you'd be interested, but gosh, I have these four parcels over here. Do you want them? Yeah. Look them up. You might want them. You probably do want them, you know, roll it into your purchase. And that's often how we get going in other areas and you learn about them. So great question. All right. Thank you. Um, I have a passed on question here. Uh, Veronica sent in any ideas on direct mail marketing working in Canada, the Alberta area. This is, you know, we do, it's where we can get the data. And we do, I want to try and think if we covered that a little bit in one point. I'm waiting for for uh, Stephen's probably going to weigh in on this. I think we did cover a little bit in that in 1.0 because we can get some assessor data in parts of Canada. Have we bought and sold property in Canada? Heck yeah. So I'm only, it's just, if I get my hands on the data, I would do it in a heartbeat. And some of them we even bought with them, um, with structures. I remember we did some on the way, um, the way East coast uh, of Canada had some great, like it was gorgeous, island property, if you will, with a cabin on it. And boy, those went fast. So yes. Stacy asked, do you recommend completing some vacant land deals prior to working in fill lots? I, you know, I do. Well, I shouldn't say that. You know, it's personal preference. <laughs> uh, for a lot of folks, it's easier to start uh, we're all vacant land and kind of learning the ropes. So, but you know, there's so many things about infill lots that are easier for starters. Uh, you're not completing them yourself. Usually these are higher dollar amounts and you're going through escrow. So they're doing the due diligence and completing that part of it for you. So, you know, what? I, I'm, I'm actually now not sure, Stacey, I'm, I'm changing my thinking about it here. So you could, because some people dive in and they have bigger budgets and they dump right, jump right in. I would recommend watching 1.0 and understanding and knowing the whole process and then moving into, and then doing 2.0, which is all about infill lots, and then uh, start sending out mail. Awesome. Hi, Harry. Harry C says, thank you for the help with getting me started, Jill. I just finished my first mailer. Any specific questions I should ask the callers apart from the usual stuff? Thank you. Oh, thank you. This came through. So um, from Harry, I use that checklist. If you don't have that checklist, reach out to my team for that checklist. It's support at landacademy.com. 
what I'm talking about is my checklist, which is, I should, we should just put it somewhere too, by the way. Maybe we'll put it in the blog or something on Land Academy, but I have a checklist when the callers call you back and they're responding to your letter. I want you to get all the information needed um, about the county. You know, hey, are you current on your taxes? Um, are you are you the seller? Is everybody alive able to sign? You know, what do you know about the property? Um, and one of the key things too is, do you have anything else? So those are the main things along with their email, you know, their name, their address, their phone number. It's funny, especially when you're starting, we're often kind of nervous when these calls come in and you're like, I, you know, I want to sound like I know what I'm doing, but oh my gosh, I don't want to forget something. So even for my, my staff, I have them print that out and have it on their desk. So when the, they can answer the call and just kind of literally fill out the checklist, have all the information right there. And then they transport it, transpose that, excuse me, into a spreadsheet. And then it gets pushed to Stephen for review and acquisition and approval and, and that. So good question. Lisa has a good one. Hi, Jill. Please bear with me. I had my question typed up, but my computer locked up on me. I understand, Lisa. So I'm trying to do this from my phone. I have a question about the red, yellow, green test that on the computer or on the number of mailers. Steve says to mail out per month. Got it. He said 2,600 mailers per month. Does that mean you download all the possible lots that are in that zip code after spot checking each one? Because after spot checking, I found that a majority of the lots are unusable or a ditch, or somehow not ideal. Can you clarify if he means 2,600 and I hope for a good one to come back or pull enough data, spot check down to 2,600 good lots. I'm having trouble finding enough good markets to wind up with 2,600, much less every month. That is an excellent question. And Lisa, it's part two. So you want to, cause here's why. When you're sending out offers on rural vacant land, you need about 1,500 to go out, not start with 1,500 and send out 900. You want to get it down to 1,500 that you've spot checked and you send out those offers to yield two to three land deals. During rural vacant land, or excuse me, during infill lots or houses, you want to get that down, like Lisa's shooting for 2,600. You want to get that up towards 36 or towards 3,000 that goes out because that's going to lead lend you one to two um, house deals. And then info lots is going to be, if you're just targeting those, you're going to be kind of in the middle there. So you want to, the more mail that goes out, Lisa, the better. And the more it goes out at one time, the better. I know sometimes it might be, you might feel overwhelming because your phone's ringing off the hook, keeping up with these. But trust me, that's where you want to be. You want to have so many people calling you back that you can sit down and gosh, like, you know, you're overwhelmed. You put them all in a spreadsheet and you have 20 or 30 now that they want to sell to you. That gives you so much now to go back and review and get serious about, and then just pick the best ones. That's where you want to be. You spending the money, getting the data is a cheap part. So don't worry about that. Spend away on the data. It doesn't matter. It's 10 cents a record. Who cares? It's worth it in the end. And you're you're going to use that data because there's a lot of things you could do with that data, like uh, buyers list out of that data. There's a lot of valuable information in there. Then you want to get you want to get picky when it comes to getting the mail out. So now you're now you're getting serious about you know the offers that you're sending and you're spot checking and making sure you got you got good batches. That's exactly what you should be doing, Lisa. You're doing it right. And then the picky is now buying the property, obviously. And that's why I want you to have, I want you to have so many to choose from. When you line up 20 properties, there's going to be a few that quickly rise to the top that you're going to go, oh my gosh, I got to run to the bank here. I don't want this guy to change his mind because now I'm, because I'm comparing that one to these 20 and I see what he's, he likes my offer at this price. Holy cow. You know, that's what you want. Great, great question. All right. This is kind of a, kind of a, kind of a quiet day. I hope I didn't overwhelm you all. <laughs> hope that's not what's going on. 
So thank you very much. I'm so happy that you are you are here and asked away. Please feel free to uh, add in more questions later on if you if you missed the window or you're driving. Um, I have a whoops. I have another one. That. But thank you. Just got in here. Joshua asks, if this is your first deal, what price range would you look to offer? And what type of area? I'm sure you covered this, but I joined late. Thank you. No problem. Okay, my first deal. Let me think about this. Um, what price range uh, would I offer and what type of area? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, the area to, to pick that we talked to, and this is good. And that's one of the things that you're gonna do first. You're gonna pick a you're gonna pick a county, spend time picking a county. There's things that we go into and, and the top three things here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll back here for you, Joshua, and just kind of give you the highlights. And we covered this in, in detail in 1.0, Atlanta County 1.0, but to pick an area, things that you're gonna look for are you're gonna use population density maps and census maps, and you're gonna learn Steven's strategy and how to use that to look for areas for inexpensive land. You're gonna also look for uh, the number of properties that are available, and you're gonna compare that to the number of properties that are in a back tax situation. Not the properties, but how many are. Maybe it's, there's a, there's a direct ratio to the whole properties in a county and the number of properties that are in a back tax situation. That's part of, part of the process when you're picking a county that you know you're going to get a good response. And the third one is you're going to you're going to review several online land selling sites looking looking at the prices to make sure it matches your criteria and what look to be, you know, inexpensive areas to buy and sell land. As far as your budget, dream it up. I, mean, I have people, I have people that come to me that a lot of people it seems like they have a like a $10,000 sweet spot. If you're coming to me with $10,000 to invest, um, just for the property part, I would buy 10 $1,000 properties. Just do those. Your goal is to buy them for a thousand. There were three or 4,000. I want you to sell them for $2,000 because that way I know you're going to sell them fast and get out. By the time you're done with that, you have made $10,000 by the way, and you did it fast. And now you got your feet wet. You worked a lot of the kinks out. And what if one of those tens, oh, you did it wrong and you sold it for $1,400. So what? You made your money on all the other ones. It's fine. And you still made money. So that's okay. And it's funny too. We, we, uh, we joke about that on our, our weekly member calls when people pipe in and they say, oh my gosh, I did it wrong. I, I bought it for a thousand. I only really, that's, you only made $400. I think you're okay. How are the other ones? Well, I, those were great. That one I sold for, you know, 2,600 and that one for 3,000. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You know, you're looking at this wrong. You did great. So that's what I would recommend. Some people come in with a hundred thousand dollars to play with. And I'm still going to tell you the same thing. Please don't sink it all on one property, especially if you're starting out. I want you to, I want you to put it in multiple properties and get your feet wet and then start making some different decisions after you, you have a handle on it. So excellent question. This is great. Okay, I have, I have another one, Lisa. This is so good. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, are you, fran I, I, I envision you on your cell phone, hopefully pull over, <laughs> frantically typing these in, and this is good. Uh, Lisa asked, may I ask one more question, of course, about the red, yellow, green test. So I'm gonna, let me just give a little insight too. So the red, yellow, green test is what we share in Land Academy 2.0, and it's using data that we can extract from online sources, um, real estate sites, and plug it in, such as um, the properties in a county, days on market, um, how uh, the price point, how many, the, when the properties are posted for sale, how often, at what percentage do they sell at the price they're listed at, there's all kinds of factors that go in, and that's what we use to red, yellow, and green light a county to send offers for infill lots or houses. So this is what Lisa's referring to. So her question is, so I'm going to peek at this real quick again. Um, if the 
if the days on market are good, so less than 30 days, and the parcels on the market to all is green or yellow, but the column of lists of leases clearly a member. The other thing I want to share with you, Stephen put this whole, uh, um, created a whole series of spreadsheets that we share in our program with detailed instructions where to go, where to copy the data, plug it into the spreadsheet, and and the and the um, it automatically populates all this data. All the formulas are in there that Stephen created. So this is what Lisa's referring to. This is worth its weight in gold, by the way, in 2.0. I, it's it's phenomenal. It takes, like I said, the guesswork out, and that's why Lisa's able to ask these questions. Like, okay, I know the days on market check. I know that check. That's why. She, she's got a cheat. It's a cheat sheet is really what it is. And it's awesome. Okay. So Lisa's saying, all right, so it looks good on the days on market, that column, but the list to sold is higher. Maybe it's yellow or red. Does that disqualify the zip code and Carly if the other two look good? And if so, why? Thanks for your help, Jill. I love your new show. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, you know, I, I would say to make it easier on yourself, Lisa, it's too easy to move to another area, I would go with two greens and a yellow. But if I got a red in there, I'm not so excited. And remember, red, yellow, and green, there's, um, Stephen shares, you know, his comfort level, but you're going to pick, you might uh, massage it to your comfort level. And you might make your comfort level uh, even more critical of Stephen's, because then you know, you're like, I can't go wrong kind of thing. So it's, it's really preference, but again, there's a reason why we want to hit, you know, like I said, there's a reason why there's a red. If, if uh, I've got a County or I've got an area that green for everything, but days on market, it's red days on market. Their days on market are, you know, six months. I don't, I wouldn't want to mail that, that area. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense to me. So that's, that's a why. Uh, and it's, like I said, it's too easy to move on. And again, you know what you're doing. This this stuff that you're extracting, Lisa, and you're plugging into the spreadsheet is free to you right now. So you could spend a whole weekend playing with this and something is going to pop up and, and you're going to go, what? And you'll know. And then your letters will go out that next day, probably. <laughs> so you're doing it right. <laughs> All right. Jake asks, uh, tell me more about multi-county multi mailers. I'll be sending out four counties to get enough numbers for a viable mailer. Do I send out four separate mailers at the same time or combine them into the same mail merge? Again, it's kind of it's kind of whatever it's, e it's easiest for you, but I want to go out at the same time. So in a perfect world, if you, because your your um, offer, your letter, your template letter is the same, and you have your data that you send to offers to owner to do the mail merge for you, I would ideally have them on one spreadsheet, and you just know, you know, the first, you know, eight hundred, because that's one county, and they're all that size. When you're running your formula down the page and you're auto pricing them, how you know how to do, you know, have that chunk. And then you have like a line there and your next row, you know, price them that way, that next county, and then you, the third batch, and then the fourth batch, because you have four. And then you've got them all priced. You kind of eyeball them, make sure you're good. Uh, take out your lines so it's all one spreadsheet and then send it to offers to owners. They're not going to notice that it's different counties and different areas. They don't need to know that. And then you're getting them out at the same time. So they'll hit and you could field all the calls at the same time. So good question. You are welcome, Joshua. Thank you. I, I and I think with Lisa, I might be guessing correctly. Thank you. <laughs> love it. Uh, hi, Teddy. Uh, love, love, love your show. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Looking forward to my call with you next week. How fast was the quickest closing process you have ever seen. Thank you. You know, uh, hours, and that's that's what we that's what we're striving for here, Teddy. Excellent question. Um, 
This is something that you can do and many of us are doing right now, uh, especially with properties, you know, that we're buying for a couple thousand dollars and buying property for $800 and selling it for $2,000 is, is, is it, once you, once you just get into our world, our members are doing it all the time. And we crack up because like, I just posted it yesterday and they wake up the next morning and someone checked out because that there's a sweet spot there. There's a under, under about even $15,000. There's a lot of people that if you post your property correctly, you buy it right, it's priced correctly, it's posted correctly, and it is put out there correctly, like on all the right sites, everything that we teach you and show you to do, there's no reason why you're not going to wake up tomorrow and go, oh, that was fast. I guess, I guess, shucks, I didn't even mail in the first deed. Oh, okay, to get it, you know, recorded yet. I guess I'm mailing in two deeds today because someone already bought it. So that's, that's how it can go. And it could be ours. So hang, we'll get you there. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Let's see here. Jake asks, is there a quick way to get days on market numbers in any market? Yes, that's in 2.0. <laughs> Go get it, download. If you've not dug into that too far, Jake, jump ahead and download. I um, can't remember what chapter it's in, but download the section uh, that covers we're extracting that data and plugging that in in uh, Stephen's uh, spreadsheet that you have in 2.0. And you could just sit and play with it. I'm trying to remember. There's one of two sites. I can remember it's Realtor or Redfin where we where we extract that data. And it's right there and knock yourself out. So you are welcome, Lisa. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your questions. Skylar asks, Jill, I just mailed outside my city. And most are wanting full market price. They they start out that way. <laughs> One acre is going for $20,000. I offered five to $7,000. No takers. Any suggestion? Yeah, absolutely. Sit, wait, hang in there. It's going to happen. So if you did everything that we said, everything that we kind of taught you to do, that's part of the, that's part of the first wave of calls that you get in. I, I talked about that a little bit on the show today, you know, week three, you know, the, the calls and the responses start coming in. And often the first wave are two things. One is, yeah, well, I'm only going to sell it for, you know, X million dollars because they, they don't really want to sell. They're hanging out for retail. Or two, again, they don't want to sell and they're calling to tell you you're nuts. Please don't call me. Remove me from your list. And that's when you say, okay, fine. Sorry about it. No problem. You know, and move on. No big deal. But the next wave is going to be, and when, by the way, you know you did it right. When uh, you get, you start getting those calls that are like, that they're kind of mad at you. <laughs> if everybody calls you back, how about this? This is how you know you did it wrong too. When everyone calls you back, they love your offers and they want to sell at exactly the price you offered. That's what you don't want. That means, uh-oh, I may have offered too much because every single person is calling me back. I might've goofed. <laughs> but when you start getting the calls that come in, they're like, you're nuts. And they're mad at you. That's not a bad thing. Sit tight because you said you just mailed it. Wait a few more days. Let some of those people call you, start calling you back. And because right now they just got it. They're looking at it. They're thinking about it. Their wife is probably saying, sweetheart, you need to call this guy tomorrow. I'm sick of this right now. I'm, I got I just paid the taxes again on it last month. You know, I want to sell this and the year's coming. I could sure use the Christmas money, whatever it is. So sit tight. A great question. So that's my suggestion. Hang out. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll be Abby. I just remember Abby. We thank you very much. Abby asks, Hey, Jill, uh, can you please talk about seller financing in states where non judicial foreclosure is the norm, like Florida? How do you handle buyers who stop making payments in those states? Okay, so we're talking about states where I have non-judicial foreclosure. Let me back up and tell you something, Abby, and I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not doing seller financing a whole lot. And one of the reasons why is I don't want to get into all this. I don't like going to foreclosure. I don't like having to um, 
record deeds or land contracts and chase people and undo things. Some of our members do, and they're happy with that. It's so much work. I'd rather sell it for cash. So I'm happy to answer this question. It's going to get lengthy. So um, I know you know where to find me. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to defer that. And when I have Steven too, cause he's even better at, that, at answering that than I am. So I'm going to defer that to um, when we have Steven and, and we will cover it, but I'm just going to say, let's think about cash on any of the States that where there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, and we all know, or if you don't, you'll quickly learn, you know, most States are really, really easy, you know, but I'm for cash. It's a no brainer seller financing. There are states you have to think about. And a lot of this too, by the way, you can find in our online community on landinvestors.com because there's been lots of discussions about the right ways and the wrong ways to do this in many of our states too. So it's it's an excellent question and I and uh, happy to get in, happy to talk about it when I have more time. So thank you. You are very welcome, Skylar. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We went over and I'm I'm happy to do it. So I hope you all enjoyed uh, enjoyed this with me again today. N again. So next week is gonna be week nine, and I will I will recap weeks one through three a little bit for anyone that kind of tuned in late on how to get this to get one deal done in 45 days. Next week, I'll cover the back end, which are weeks four, five, and six. And I'm happy to answer more questions. If you want to pop them in after the show, please be sure and get our free ebook. You can find it on landacademy.com. I am Jill DeWitt from Land Academy. I'm here to help you get started. That's the hardest part. <laughs>